particularly being grateful for our colleagues in the media from the Indian Ocean Rim countries who are here. There are 31 of them, and I'd like to welcome them specifically to this first interaction uh, that they are attending in the Ministry of External Affairs. Our primary focus today would be a briefing on the 12th meeting of the Council of Ministers of the Indian Ocean Rim Association for Regional Cooperation. I have here with me um, Secretary Economic Relations, Mr. Sudhir Vyas, who is India's senior representative in the senior of who is India's representative at the senior officials meeting of the IORERC, and he will brief you today on the events leading to the IORERC. After that, we will open the floor for questions on IORERC, and following which we will briefly uh, stop so that we permit Secretary ER to leave. And then if you have any other questions on any other issues that you may like to ask, I'll be uh, willing to answer those questions. Uh, before I begin, I would also like to introduce, we, we have along with uh, Secretary Economic Relations, we have Mr. Dinesh Bhartia, and, uh, who is Joint Secretary Multilateral Economic Relations, and Mr. Charanjit Singh, who is, joint, uh, who is Director of Multilateral Economic Relations. Both of them will assist Secretary ER in case you have some questions which are of such deep value that uh, he would require assistance from others. With that, I open the floor uh, and request uh, Secretary ER to make a few opening remarks and then we will open the floor for further questions. Secretary ER. Thank you, Abhav. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. And thank you uh, for your attention, your interest in this subject. Um, I welcome also to those uh, friends from the media who are here for this important event. The Sonia Defense Minister, Mr. Salman Kurshi, is chairing the 12th meeting of the Council of Ministers, which is the apex body of the Indian Ocean Rim Association for Regional Cooperation, which we refer to by its acronym IRAC, on 2nd November at the Overworld of Delhi, Bulgaria. And this is, meeting is the culmination of a series of interactions of bodies of this association preceded therefore by uh, the Indian Ocean Rim Academic Forum, the Indian Ocean Business Forum, the Working Group on Trade and Investment, which is a group of officials, government officials dealing with trade policy issues, and finally the Committee of Senior Officials, which I will chair tomorrow and thereafter. Meetings have already begun with the academic group met, having met yesterday. Today, the working group on trade and industry is deliberating issues of trade facilitation and so on. By tomorrow, the business forum will meet to take up its agenda of business to business cooperation. The committee of senior officials will meet alongside to pull the strings together and take stock of progress and make its, decide upon its recommendations to the Council of Ministers, which will then meet on the second edition <coughs> and conclude the second A few words on the background. The idea of such an association actually goes very far back. And it would be interesting to know that our first practice in the Wanda Nehru was the book Discovery of India, which predates independence, and envisioned a group of countries bordering the Indian Ocean and helping each other in tackling common challenges. A similar idea was mooted by the then Foreign Minister of South Africa, Sir Pete Botham, during his 1992 visit. 
and given a further freedom by Mr. Nelson Mandela. He was also wounded by the Shah of Iran in 1970 and subsequently explored by Mauritius in 1980. So there is a very strong political will that underpins this situation. And this led to a group of seven countries, one from each uh, sort of uh, side of the Indian Ocean, Australia, India, Kenya, Sultanate of Oman, Singapore, and South Africa, and the so-called seven meeting in Mauritius in 1995. This was called the N7, Mauritius 7. We talk about enhancing cooperation on the agreement. And in a joint statement, they agreed on, and I quote, interestingly, these words are relevant, principles of open regionalism and inclusivity of membership, with the objectives of trade liberalization and promoting trade cooperation. And in, uh, this was expanded to the M14 with the addition of seven more members. And the association was formally launched after five more members had joined in March 1997. This makes it the 15th year of the association's existence. IRR is the only pan Indian organization of its pan Indian. Ocean organization of its kind. A unique group of states in the rim of the ocean, which accounts for no less than 2 billion people. States that are characterized by diversity in size, population, culture, and economic development. A notable feature is the number of overlapping regional organizations have their own rationale. And therefore, the members of IRR are also members of other multilateral countries, ASEAN, DCC, SAR, And therefore, IRR has to increasingly position itself as an apex body. This takes into account the differing perspectives, the differing approaches, and binds them together into a unified whole. In spite of the diversity, over the last few years, the countries of the Indian Ocean Rim have clearly come together on one account, the strategic, that their strategic interests are served by the well-being and stability of the maritime world. That is what brings this association together and what has given it relevance in the contemporary world. The Indian Ocean is the third largest body of water on Earth, linking the developed economies of the West to the burgeoning powerhouses and markets of Asia and the East. Seventy percent of global traffic in petroleum products and energy and half the world's containers traffic transits across the Indian Ocean. Apart from its major reserves of oil and gas, the Indian Ocean Rim is rich in resources from fisheries, precious minerals, from agricultural <coughs> wealth, and valuable human and technical resources. And the Indian Ocean has its challenges, which the threats in parts of the Indian Ocean maritime security, uh, incidents of piracy that have taken place over the last few years, as the Indian Ocean region has been the victim of a tsunami in 2004. All this are issues that are of concern to the region. Therefore, the well-being and stability of the region has been and continues to be critical for the membership as well as for global economic growth. It's interesting that despite the global economic slowdown and the slow recovery, Indian Ocean Rim economies performed well in 2011. In 2011, the combined GDP of IRR members 
was estimated at US dollar 6.5 trillion, <coughs> up from 5.7 trillion in 2010, just one year. From 2001 to 2010, regional trade more than tripled. From US dollars 1.1 trillion in 2001 to US dollars 3.5 trillion in 2010. And the share of intra IRR trade in global trade increased from 8.6 to 11.6 regional investment trends have also shown a certain growth. Both FDI inflows as well as outflows. FDI inflows into the inflows <coughs> in countries for ripple into US dollars 2,201 billion in 2011 from a mere 50 billion dollars in 2009. Share of IRR's global FDI inflows from 6% in 2001 to 13.2% in 2010. For India, the Indian Ocean occupies a particularly important position in our economic and strategic perspectives. Across the Indian Ocean, it moves 90% of our energy imports. It gives you a sense of our criticality of energy movement. over 80% of India's international trade. India's total trade with the ring states has grown more than eightfold to reach $156 billion during the period 2001 to 2010. It was, 2000, it was $1 1 $156 billion last year. Our telephone and internet connectivity is largely dependent <coughs> on quality undersea communication cable infrastructure. Let me talk a little bit about our association itself. Today, IROC has 19 members. Socials, which have, has joined as the 19th member at the last Council of Ministers meeting in Bengaluru last year. And these are Australia, Bangladesh, <coughs> India, Indonesia, Iran, Kenya, Malaysia, Madagascar, Mauritius, Mozambique, Oman, Seychelles, Singapore, South Africa, Sri Lanka, Tanzania, UAE, and Yemen. There are five dialogue partners in the association, namely China, Egypt, France, Japan, and the UK. There are two observer organizations, the Indian Ocean Research Group and the Indian Ocean Tourism Organization, IRR has established three institutions so far. An institution building, institution building, excellence in disciplines and areas of interest and relevance and value to the Indian Ocean Rim are a critical component, important component of the work of our association. Take for example the fisheries sector. The fisheries support unit was established in 2005 in Omar for enhancing the cooperation in the fisheries sector and an action plan is under finalization. And it is clearly realized by all members action in such fronts cannot be handled by one country alone. Cooperation has augment individual resources and produce resources. The regional center for science and technology transfer in Tehran has a mandate for facilitating transfer of technology at a regional level and dissemination and commercialization of know-how in technology. <coughs> Maritime Transport Council established in 2010, is envisaged as a regional specialized agency for strengthening cooperation in maritime transport issues. 
I mentioned earlier that IRR is an association of diverse diversities, including in economic development, levels of economic development and financial capacity. It therefore it has instituted a special fund um, at the six Council of Ministers meeting there to help support projects, social association projects, by some of its less developed members who may require additional financial resources to organize workshops, debates, and resources. In fact, India was the first country to announce an initial contribution to the special fund. And it's been followed by Iran, Oman, Yemen, China, and others. Last year, India announced a further contribution of $1 million to the So we made a beginning in Bengaluru last year by identifying six priority areas for the work of our associations. And the first, and all this I must mention, I should have mentioned, the, the association's primary objective is economic well-being, economic cooperation, or the welfare of the people. A lot of Elements feed into this primary duty. And the first one of our priorities is one such maritime safety and security, which includes anti piracy operations. Whether we can coordinate our efforts and put our individual efforts to get best results. Capacity building is the second, the core area of trade and investment facilities. Again, as I mentioned earlier, IRR is not a monolithic um, body. It overlaps with other regional organizations and therefore has to find means and a, a way of organizing its work of trade facilitation and liberalization that does not conflict or run into conflict with the priorities of the others. So we follow a, a, a very deliberative approach um, in the work of all the Third, fisheries. I mentioned this in the context of fishery support in many countries, particularly, for example, off the coast of, of East Africa. Talked about the amount of poaching that takes place in the village, inclusive economic zones, of fish. How do we manage, monitor, conserve, and make use of fish? Do we know what uh, the virus? This is the second area of Disaster risk reduction and humanitarian access. Indian has suffered from a tsunami in 2004. Tomorrow will be an oil spill visiting the amount of crude that travels across the ocean and will be devastating to one of its modern parties. And therefore, humanitarian access and disaster management is a critical area we should identify as well. Academic and science and technology cooperation. I mentioned the academic risk. Uh, group which met, uh, which is, I just met yesterday. <coughs> the, do we know our domain? Do we understand? Do we know the monsters? Do we know the hydrology, the oceanography of the Indian Ocean? Do we know the coastal zones and how they would be impacted? Coastal erosion, all these issues, the patterns of tree, the history we have in the ocean, all this is relevant to this priority area, academic and science. And finally, 
tourism promotion and cultural exchange, tourism with the USP of the region, cultural commonality exists across the region, which goes back centuries, uh, and therefore this is what picks up. As chair of IRA, our approach has been to take forward cooperation within each of these priority areas. I'm happy to see that we are seeing some of them. I will touch to our investment data um, on the value of the that we have initiated last year uh, in pursuit of Let me not define this thing about that. But I just want to mention that a lot of these have been extremely well attended. I'm happy to see that we have not invest um, in uh, data. We are planning some major marks in the Future perspectives. Despite the enormous potential for cooperation in the set of local areas, we feel, and I'm sure this feeling is widely shared by the member states also, that IRA can do much. Uh, and that is a challenge before us. That is as what we have tried to do as the chair, try to <coughs> bring the body, bring the substance, and value to this association. As I said, this year marks the 15th year of the creation of IRA. We've chosen a theme for the 10th Council of Regional Committee, which is IRA at 15, the next day. We would like to talk and discuss uh, amongst ourselves what could be the focal purposes of cooperation under our association, what could be the direction of the growth in coming years, there is a means to further consolidate our efforts so that IRA hope in the fast changing global economic and strategic environment and in particular enhances the capacity to meet the contemporary expectations of members and challenges. This is my way of background and uh, what we will do is that, uh, or any of you who ask questions, please raise your hand so that we can identify. And many of you are coming here for the first time. Maybe you should identify yourself also in the mic before you ask the question. So the floor is now open uh, on IOR ARC at this stage. And after we finish this, we give a couple of minutes break and then start the rest of it. Yes, sir. Can you please identify yourself? Uh, I come from Bangladesh. I want to know the state of cooperation between Bangladesh and uh, Indian Ocean Dream Organization. Between Bangladesh and Indian Ocean Dream, what I can tell you is that Bangladesh has been a very active participant in the affairs of the Indian It has brought value and substance to all our meetings and interactions. If you are looking for example, for figures like the ones that I mentioned of trade between India and, and the other Indian countries, I think that question you probably <coughs> have to address with the delegation of Bangladesh, the best place to respond. Having said that, we value the Bangladesh's contribution to all our delegations, particularly <coughs> the areas of scientific and technical cooperation, the new facilitation has become a very, very solution that I get. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, I am Saul Powell from Iran. Uh, I have a uh, one question. Uh, what is India's plan to promote uh, IORIRC's status among other international uh, organizations? For example, G8, G20. <coughs> Uh, do you plan to have a uh, political body for this organization, such that, uh, such that organization? Thank you for that very interesting question. Uh, the association's objectives, as defined in its charter, are primarily economic, economic and social, the well-being of the 
there is no proposal at the moment to give it a political country. However, there are various aspects when we talk about the strategy, strategic relevance of the Indian Ocean to all its membership. It is inevitable that some issues which are not necessarily purely economic in nature impact on the work of this. <coughs> Take for example, I just mentioned this, maritime security, issues of piracy, issues of humanitarian access and disaster relief. These are not necessarily economic, but they impinge and impact directly on the economic welfare of our and the economic activities in our day to day. And therefore, they are certainly be one part of the association work. The other issue about its association with different bodies. <coughs> Given the value and the relevance of this association, not only to its members, but also globally, because we are now talking of an oceanic domain, which is a domain that is of interest and of relevance globally. And this is something that we want to discuss. We have to tie the IRR, IRR to position itself as an apex body for the region. It is the only association that brings together the entire region. And therefore, as an apex body, we should work with overlapping institutions like SAR, like SADIC, like ASEAN, to see if we can bring up from We would also, for example, like to work with uh, the United Nations. And because as uh, we believe that we can bring value and substance to the subject of organizations like that, this is again a subject of ongoing debate and will be debated during this forthcoming meeting. And I hope we first go out. I cannot predict on this report. But uh, it's certainly, in my view, my understanding is that it's very much in my view. <coughs> <laughs> Sir, my name is Moses. I'm from the New Straits Times of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, I noticed that uh, IOR uh, has steered clear of defense. Uh, is this consciously done or uh, given the fact that uh, the increase in concern over American and Chinese presence in the Indian Ocean, which would of course affect all uh, countries on the borders of the ocean. Should this be on the table? And will it be on the table at this point? Thank you. Again, uh, the charter emphasizes the and the primarily economic and social needs. If there are needs and requirements, again, I will refer to this whole question of maritime security. We are not talking about defense. We are talking about capacity building and cooperation. Two hands do better than one in managing, improving, and improving <coughs> maritime security, the maritime security environment <coughs> in the Indian Ocean. Because that impacts on the work of the association, that impacts on the way you, you have piracy, you have. Okay, take, for example, the incidents of piracy that have taken place. Today, you see, because of this, rising ocean issues for shipping impacts on the economic value of, of all our countries. And therefore, it is a fit subject, a relevant subject. So if you ask me directly, if you ask me a point that, one that question, whether defense is going to be a problem, you can answer it. If it is relevant to the charter, it's fine. Yes, ma'am. Please. Everybody will answer. Hello. Uh, my name is uh, when the Indian Embassy sent us the, the invitation for this conference, well, we didn't know what is the conference, and even my boss, so we have to Google it. And I have heard that this was the case of many of the journalists in the group itself. So don't you think that you have, that you, I mean, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, have to work more in promoting this conference, and maybe make, make more uh, fast and, uh, I don't know, serious, uh, the solution uh, that really makes a difference in the Indian Ocean Country? A splendid question, and you are spot on. I completely agree. I completely agree that uh, the Indian Ocean uh, uh, 
the commonalities of the Indian Ocean and what you need to do should permeate down very deep into uh, the thinking of the issue of journalists, uh, academics, because without that kind of awareness, having said that, Iran is a founder member of Arara, should have known what this conference is about. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Please sit down. Wait, wait, wait. Mr. Mahabur Rahman, I'm from... Please sit down. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh. I'm from Bangladesh. I'm working in a Bengali daily. You know, uh, the name is uh, Amar Teish. Uh, I would like to uh, know uh, your organization, you know, IOS, 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 uh, working with uh, various aspects, but uh, especially maritime security is the most, mostly uh, it is the most important part of this organization work. So I would like to know, <coughs> maritime, uh, maritime boundary with, ba with Bangladesh, you know, has a uh, complaint at international tribunal. Has maritime boundary with uh, Bangladesh has a complaint at uh, international tribunal. You know, uh, which will be solved at 2014. Uh, uh, who know? Uh, is not there any uh, you know option or opportunity to solve the uh, maritime uh, boundary problem uh, in discussion by this organization? Uh, you know, logically we can, uh, regionally, uh, regionally we can solve by this organization. Is there any uh, opportunity? And in this conference. Yeah, can we discuss? Is uh, is it? Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, no, there are mechanisms for for dealing with these kind of issues, which are which routinely arise in many parts of the world. Uh, but no, this association and the government's policy excludes bilateral uh, It's looking at areas where all countries share common interests, and we can bring capacity to <coughs> the issue to a that it excludes by that. Uh, <coughs> uh, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Fakir Al-Shay. I'm from Yemen. 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 And my question, my question is how do you look with the uh, uh, cooperation economy, the current cooperation economy that's going between Yemen and India as we have like historical and the strong Business and investment rate for centuries, and and what do you uh, and how do you are looking for the cooperation that's currently is going between the association? And when you when you discuss piracy, we know that Yemen has been affected by badly by piracy, and the shipping to Yemen is the most expensive uh, for due to the security issues. And you are helping us because what I know the insurance companies are not accepting to load the ships into Yemen when it comes to shipping. So they rather go to Djibouti rather than going to Yemen. And uh, the prices is getting up, uh, uh, is increasing tremendously because of the shipping costs. Can you just help us or brief us and how, how you are helping Yemen to get out of this problem? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very relevant. Uh, Yemen, of course, is at the forefront of this effort. Clearly, we in fact, by what is happening. Uh, the entire pirate, the whole uh, challenge of pirate, of pirates uh, in the off the horn of Africa, which borders Yemen, is clearly impacted the This has been identified as a priority for our efforts in Africa and will certainly be related to some intensity in depth uh, hopefully in the future. We are also looking at workshops and uh, uh, seminars for capacity building in this particular area. A couple have already been made uh, and we are organizing, we are looking at organizing one in uh, the around April next year on the whole issue of maritime security and privacy, we plan to hold a seminar in India which can act as a focus for cooperation within IRR. You asked me a little bit about bilateral figures to create an investment between 
Thank you very much. With that, we come to the end of this part of the interaction. A couple of minutes, and then we'll have on the record uh, responses to any other questions that you may like to have. I have a question. I have a question, which is why is it that not a senior Indian during this process? No, the my. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>